Kamala Harris is on all the smoke podcast with, and it was kind of weird. I was scratching my head when I realized that she's going on this podcast. Cause I'm like, out of all the podcasts that you could have been, that you could have went on, why would you choose all the smoke? When I thought about it, I'm like, she needs the culture. She needs the, she's going after the culture. Okay. Because now her blackness is being questioned. So this was the perfect podcast, I think, for that, in my opinion. So I'm going to go over these two clips from Candace Owens podcast and All The Smoke podcast. And this is all that you need to know about this whole thing, okay? Candace Owens is just a thorn in Kamala Harris's backside right now. It's hard. It's going to be hard for her to get to not answer Kamala uh, Candace Owens questions and think that she's going to win this race. But without further ado, I'm going to get right into um, all the smoke. I'm going to give y'all my opinion on what I think about it. Uh, but let's hear uh, this clip that I clipped out of all the smoke where Candace, I mean, Kamala Harris is talking about, you know, the black vote, how black people feel. Check it out. Parents bought their thinking by the time my daughter's old enough, hopefully she won't be going through this. That's exactly right. But see, they also taught me this. Don't fall asleep on this stuff. Don't fall asleep on it. Don't sit back and get comfortable. Like, oh, that's done. You know, there's this old saying, it's Coretta Scott King. She said, I paraphrase it all the time, the fight for civil rights, which she meant the fight for justice, the fight for equality, must be fought and won with each generation. And I think what she meant is one, understand whatever gains we make will not be permanent, and two, therefore you must be vigilant. You gotta stay on top of it. And by the way, don't complain about that. HBCUs are such a big thing. So before we get into the HBCUs, she goes on to say, The fight that black people make in this country or wherever they had, you have to do it for generations and generations. Now, if you don't have common sense to understand, right, what she's basically trying to say is that nothing matters. If we're doing something and we're fighting for the people of the next generation, why should they have to fight for the same cause that our ancestors fought for. That's what makes you understand that these politics is a joke. Okay? It's it, it, it's marketable. It's for us to want to keep fighting for the same stuff. And it's for control to be able to control the same stuff. I mean, this is just my opinion. I think that was not smart for her to say. In my opinion. Y'all let me know what y'all think. But let's hear about this with the HBCUs. Thing now and it, it, it's I feel like when things get trendy they become you know everyone wants to talk about it and be a part of it you were someone who went to an HBCU um, as an athlete I'm just like it's a great idea and I wish it was more cooler when I was coming up but at the same time I don't think the facilities could have held us you know what I mean I was fortunate enough to go to UCLA and it was like being a professional athlete and we were speaking to you know some of the brightest minds come from these HBCUs but the conditions aren't what some of these other yeah. schools are So the history of our HBCUs is a phenomenal history, which again was born out of struggle and people sitting around saying, we're not going to wait for other people, right? So there were a collection of people that were. I'm glad she said it. I had to stop this there. We're not going to wait on other people. That's what we, that sums up the politics for the community and black people. We don't need to be worrying about Kamala Harris. We don't need to be worrying about politics all of these presidents, we need to worry about what we're trying to do and then just do it. Because to think that somebody else is going to help you get out of a situation when it benefits them, that you're in that situation, it's just crazy to me to think you're ever going to get out of it. For white and black and of many different backgrounds who understood that young, black, bright people we're not having equal access to top levels of education. And so in a nutshell, that's how our HBCUs got formed. I attended Howard University, um, which is one of the oldest. And it built up over the years with its purpose and mission being to create national and international leaders. It had a reputation of doing that because it did that. 
But over the years, we also know that our our students, HBCU students, don't necessarily, frankly, make the same kind of incomes that people who go to predominantly white institutions do. Mm -hmm. um, don't start out on the same base. So even if they... Right. So I'm going to stop it there. That is pretty much... And I'm going to get into what Candace Owens says. But that you guys hear what she just said. She just said that at HBCUs, and she went to an HBCU, that you don't have the same as everywhere in other colleges, other universities, right? So she also said that HBCUs, you know, groom some of the best black leaders. And this is the problem of what Candace Owens is exposing, okay? She just said our leaders, and we understand that the Mason community, the Masonic community, um, they control a lot of the black leaders that go to these colleges, these secret societies. They um, have these black leaders in their groups. Now, I'm going to break you to this clip so you guys don't think I'm crazy. And I'm going to explain to you what Candace Owens is saying and how it makes sense to exactly what I'm saying. Okay. So here is so in this clip, guys, I just want you to go over and watch how she speaks about the masons check it out okay so this means that when this man passed away he wanted the world to know this is again iris's brother alves that she came over with on a ship we found the ship logs um i believe it was in uh, 1958 she came over with him on a ship and they settled in miami dade and he wanted the world to know after he passed away that he was a freemason and he visited many lodges around the world now, this is a great time for us to pause and discuss Freemasonry because there are so many different elements, cultural elements of this, which I think a lot of Americans have the wrong idea. Uh, either they don't think Freemason Freemasonry is real or they don't believe that Freemasonry is relevant um, or they believe that Freemasonry is innocent. And I'm going to speak about all of those things. So first and foremost, um, yeah. what is Freemasonry? Full stop. Okay. So during the late Middle Ages, the world was united uh, under the Holy Roman Catholic Church, okay? So if you had any opposition to the church throughout Europe, you were forced to go underground, right? We were a, a, a Christian society. And among the only organized groups that were able to move freely throughout Europe were these guilds of stonemasons. And they would then be there for because they could move freely, hence free masons. They were able to maintain meeting halls or lodges in virtually every major city. And the masons um, were essentially very talented at architecture. And they had a bunch of secret knowledge, uh, sometimes secret knowledge of architecture and of other topics. And that knowledge was dated back to the times um, of... Uh, uh, Egypt, right? And it was essential maintaining this knowledge in the construction of European churches and cathedrals. So one of the things that is well known is that Freemasons were in opposition to the church, right? They wanted to crush the church, which is why it is not ironic that the person who founded the Mormon church, as just one example, many of the churches, the very many Protestant faiths that we have, um, was Joseph Smith, and he was a Freemason. That's a fact, just as one example. Now, you may know some people that are Freemasons, and you're going, well, I know this person, and he goes to a lodge, and he's completely harmless. Yes, it is a known thing that 90 seven, like something like 97% of Freemasons are not in the top tier degree of Freemasonry. And it is understood that at the top tier degree of Freemasonry, uh, you essentially become one of the makers of the world. Now, I remember, and I've spoken about this on this podcast, but one of the things that kind of ripped me into a new reality last year when I was studying with some priests was they sort of looked at me. I was, I was in London at the time, and they just <laughs> said to me in the kindest way possible, you Americans don't know anything about real history. You just, you know, nothing about your own country. You don't even know that your country was established by Freemasons, right? And it's interesting, of course, that I'm, I'm referring to Catholic priests. I believe a lot of the reasons why people hate Catholicism or hate Catholics is because Catholics 
know history. <laughs> they have been recording history for a long time. So if you're a Freemason and you're working to rewrite history or you're telling people that America was established because of this or because of that, and they you completely remove the aspects of Freemasonry from our textbooks as they have, then yeah, you are going to be at conflict with the Catholic Church who remembers everything and keeps, you know, very good records of history. So I'm just for those of you guys who have never even heard of that, and like I said, I, I would have been among you. I'm very new to relearning American history through the lens of Freemasonry. Um, some known Freemasons, George Washington was a Freemason. Thomas Jefferson was a Freemason. Benjamin Franklin was a Freemason. Buzz Aldrin was a Freemason. Don't get me started. For those of you that have been listening to this podcast for a long time, you already know where I'm at at or where I'm at when it comes to NASA and the weird satanic chants that they were doing to establish the Apollo program and all of the weird stuff that happened leading up to the moon landing. So I freaked out when I learned Buzz Aldrin was a Freemason. It's not helping my case in believing those moon landings. I'll tell you that for free. Franklin Roosevelt was another Freemason. Sigmund Freud, that got me into a lot of trouble this year because I started speaking about Sigmund Freud. He's a member of, of B'nai B'rith, and I was telling you, like, this guy who keeps writing about child sex, uh, yeah, there are some things you should know about him. He was a Freemason. Mozart was a Freemason. Okay, so at a... a point in our history and likely even today, it was all about a battle for power, a battle for dominion over the earth. And they had all different sorts of aims. And it is true that different groups, high degree of Freemasons practiced sexual rituals. And again, that gets back into the origins of NASA. For those of you that are new to this, you got to go back and watch the NASA episode. Watch the Michael Jackson episode. Watch the NASA origin story. It's shocking. It's all in your face. You can look this up literally on Wikipedia. It's so known. I'm not like on a weird Reddit feed learning this information. Um, they believed that some of these people, and particularly speaking about NASA, you know, that you could perform these sex rituals and have these like group sex settings and you would be able to summon demons. And they believed that they would be able to conquer the earth this way. These people who established Apollo thought this. They, these people, I was uh, sharing a story. Aleister Crowley was one of these individuals. He was quite literally kicked out of Italy, Italy, pardon, by Mussolini because he was hosting a sex ritual amongst the powerful elite. That's what I think is the biggest takeaway. The biggest takeaway is that the people that practiced these sexual rights and believed in sex magic and did these things in an effort to conquer the world were elites. This wasn't like a random group of people in the middle of nowhere living in the desert doing this stuff. You know what I mean? Like this was the most powerful people in the world in an effort to believe that they would be able to conquer the nations. So that's the clip I wanted y'all to see. So what if She's just speaking about conquering and these type of parties, wheel parties. It reminds you of Diddy, right? You're thinking about the Diddy things, right? But this is part of the elites, okay? Is Diddy a part of that elite? He probably is, you know, in with that elite, but I don't think he's a solid one. In there. This is what's been going on. So the fact that Kamala Harris... Is on a is talking about the black leaders, knowing that our black leaders, like uh, the Diddies and some of the other black leaders in our history that were black and that were in the Masons, they actually were more like plants to the black people, where they're not really heroes. They're only heroes to the people who want them to be heroes. Because as to what uh, J. Edgar Hoover said, we will make their leaders for them. We will create their own messiahs. So what does this have to do with Kamala Harris? Her father or grandfather was a master mason. So it kind of puts her into the same stuff that she's going to have to get rid of right now. I don't think she can overcome can't. Candace Owens. I think if Candace Owens is on you, and I don't believe with everything that Candace Owens says, it's just she's sharp. She's, you know, she's convincing. She can sell. She makes you feel like she's speaking truly out of out of out of facts and and and, and common sense, rather than some of the politicians and the 
in, in Hollywood. But let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section, man. I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace and love. Make sure you get your free water test at Envirely.com. Here we got Mr. Pollock. He had a cornfield. He took advantage of a free water test from us. And this is what we found in this water. We found sulfur. We found hardness. And we solved these problems with an easy fix of two tanks. So get your free water test today. Stay blessed. Click the link below.